Last week I gave a small assignment to everybody in last week's class. That assignment was wherever you work for your company, try to find out the mission statement and their vision statement. Like every organization has the mission and the vision and the values. So that is what we are going to cover today. At the level of your profession, at the level of your individual person, and then at the level of our spiritual organization, what does this mission, vision, and values mean? So, let's start with invocation prayers, receiving the mercy of Guru Parampara and the Lordships. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Girin Yat Pripata Maham Vande Shri Guru Dina Tarene Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Shwaram Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavidanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurakshe Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kham Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Drubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayvacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishna Vedhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advai Tiradha Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare. Okay, so who did that assignment? Anybody looked into the mission statement, the vision statement of your company, of your profession? I know there are a few people sitting from GM. <laughs> right, so I also know the GM mission and vision statement, so we'll talk about that. Anybody else? Anybody try to look into the mission and vision statement? So every organization has a mission statement, right? Yeah. And what is that mission statement? What they want to achieve. And vision statement is? How they want to achieve that. And in the process they want to acquire certain values. What values we have, what values we want to follow to achieve our mission and vision. So all the organizations, they have their mission statement, sometimes they print the mission statement and put it on the wall. Right? Uh, some particular place like the, maybe the entrance place, the welcoming place of the office, they have their mission statement, nice big frame on the wall that this is our mission and vision. But how many employees really resonate with that mission statement and the vision statement? How many times we have really thought about that mission statement and vision statement? Anybody? 
Can anybody claim? What is the mission statement of Subway? <laughs> to feed each and every individual of the country, of the world. <laughs> every soul. <laughs> Maybe they don't say soul. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, for example, GM, right? GM has its mission statement. What is the mission statement of GM? To earn customers for life by building the brand that inspire passion and loyalty. So the mission is we want to earn customers for life. That is really the mission. Once somebody has got a GM product, they keep coming back to GM. Right? For uh, newer models, newer vehicles. So earning customers for life and earning their loyalty. How? Through breakthrough technologies. And also the mission is to serve and improve the communities in which we live. So that is the mission statement. There are thousands of GM employees. How many really they apply this mission statement in their life? Every day when you go to work, how often the mission statement of your occupation, mission statement of your profession inspire you to get out of your bed and go to work every day? Anybody? Does the mission statement of your organization, your company inspire you? As an individual. Yes or no? Many don't know what is the mission statement. Many people don't, don't know what is the mission statement. <laughs> right? Maybe it might be inspired for a short span of time. But Maybe a short span of time. Yeah, Once in a while somebody gave a pep talk, you got fired up. <laughs> After that couple of days later again, same thing. Stand up for every three quarter quarter and means so yeah. When they have an annual board meeting or annual employee meeting, every time they will push through this mission statement and vision statement so people will remember and try to work based on that. So we don't even know. We don't basically resonate with our profession's mission and vision statement because that's not really what means for us in our life. Right? That's what it means. So GM has that mission statement and to achieve that mission statement, what is their vision statement? You want to become the world's most valued automotive company. Right? We want to have number one ranking in the world in terms of automotive technology. And what is the values we carry along the way? Earn customers for life, that is mission. Become number one world company, that is the vision. And then values, along the way we say, okay, we want to have zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion. Right? That is the value we want to carry. We don't want the automatic crashes. We want to have zero congestion and zero emission. We don't want cars to emit a lot of pollution, cause environmental problems. So those are the values we want to carry. So that is anybody. So I am giving example of one organization, one company. Same way Amazon have their mission and vision statement. Anybody know what is the mission and vision statement of Amazon? Or Apple? Some of these big companies. They would buy their product so often. Everybody in the household has Apple product, isn't it? Everybody buy from Amazon these days. Do we know their mission and vision statement? <laughs> so, we don't resonate with our occupation, that's for sure. Because for us, occupation is no more than earning our livelihood. Right? That's what all it means to us. I care for myself. I go to office for what? Because I need my income. I need my salary, I need my paycheck at the end of the month. For that I work. That's for every human being, most of them that's their mission and vision. So 
for any individual the mission and vision statement of a journal materialistic person is based on this charavak philosophy and there was a some sage also by the name charavak charavak philosophy was javat jive sukhi jive trinam kritva bhitam pive bhasmi bhutasya dehasya punaragaman kita kuta so this statement carries the mission vision and values of a materialistic person what is that javat jive sukhi jive our mission statement or i would say for most of the people in the world their mission statement is to live happily right that is the mission statement just live happily in this world and how we do that you earn lot of money and their vision is this is the only life beyond this there is nothing there so you have this only one life so just live it to the fullest extent enjoy your life earn as much as you can because ultimately money will buy you happiness that is their vision statement mission is to live happily in this world vision is to earn money to enjoy this life as much as possible this is the only life and what are the value people carry along the process then Rinan Kritwa Bhitam Pive, back borrower still live like king size, right? I don't care for anything. I care for myself. So I want to enjoy the life whatever way possible. People don't care for others. People don't care for planet Earth. People don't care for environment. It's my own agenda, selfish agenda. There will be some people. who care about these things they have some values values in the sense they have some material good qualities so it it doesn't mean i don't say that materialistic person doesn't have any good qualities yes they have good qualities they may have some moral values but the point is unless somebody is connected with the supreme lord all these qualities are zero all these qualities are like zero no matter how many zeros you put unless there is one in front of the zeros it's valueless so all the good quality somebody may have but as long as he is not connected with the supreme lord is not connected with god all his qualities is meaningless so what is our mission and vision in the life we understand that when we come in the spiritual process at least right that time we start to understand that this life is not just only life we have been going through many life times and ultimate goal is to connect with the supreme lord ultimate goal is to connect with krishna so that is the goal of life we want to see that as a mission and vision is how we do that by engaging in devotional service by engaging in devotional practice by the practice of shravanam kirtanam smaranam that becomes the vision we want to achieve our ultimate goal by doing these activities and along the process we want to carry certain values but and what are the values we want to carry compassion compassion humility tolerance cooperation right so those are the certain qualities are the values which you want to carry now as an organization as a spiritual organization let's say we are following the teachings from iskon so as an organization iskon also has its mission vision and values at an individual level everybody all of us has a mission vision and value and at the level of organization there is a mission vision and values and when we come together as a group of devotees as a team of devotees we need to imbibe along with that mission statement that vision and values so when proper had established this organization so how many of you heard my sunday class 
Sunday morning Bhagavatam class. Did anybody hear that class? No? Okay. Because I mentioned some things on the same lines briefly in that class. So it may be little repetition for those who attended for 10-15 minutes. So I discussed about the seven purpose of ISKCON. Because that seven purpose of ISKCON is as the vision. How we do that. Right? How we fulfill the actual mission as an organization and as an individual. So when Prabhupada established that organization, so before even actually we go there, what is our mission statement as an institute or as an individual? We need to understand that, right? Because the mission and vision is very important as an organization and at an individual level also. For example, if I ask, so mission statement is not our occupation actually. It doesn't just shape what we do. Mission statement has to carry certain emotions. So that those emotions resonate with us, which inspire us to act on day-to-day -day life. That is really the mission statement, which inspires us also, which inspires others also. So when I ask somebody, what is, what do you do? So what do you do, Mataji? Work in subway and home. Right. So that is what we do. Right? So if I ask anybody here, somebody may say, I am a engineer, I am a doctor, I am a teacher, I am a pharmacist. So everybody can say their occupation. So mission, if I say what you really do, it's not really actually what we do as our work. What really you do as a mission of your life. So if I ask a teacher, for example, what do you do if the teacher say, I teach kids. So that is good, right? That's you do. But if somebody say, it doesn't have emotions added into that yet. So rather than saying, I teach kids, if you say, I make future. Now that will sound very interesting. I go, wow, you make future. What does it mean? So what you really do? Are you doing some research to find some cancer medicine or something, some high five work? So I make future. No, actually I teach kids. Because kids are the future and I teach kids, so I make future. So just a switch in consciousness, rather than just saying the simple statement, what I do, rather than that, you add some emotions into that, then it becomes more inspiring. Right? The engineer, when I say software engineer, I develop some softwares, I do coding, I write some program. Rather than saying, I transform people's life, I work to make people's life easy. I generally, that's what the softwares do, right? They try to make the life simpler. That's the purpose of all these computer programs in all. So, the mission statement is to inspire others and inspire ourselves. Now, another example I will give is, if I tell you, Prabhu, we have a lot of leftover prashadam. Now it will go waste. Let's go out and find somebody and give them this prashad. Will it feel very inspiring to you? Otherwise this will go waste. We have to throw this. Let's go and give it to somebody. Now rather than that, if I tell you, oh, you know what? There is a lot of maha prashad left. Let's go find some fortunate souls and give this maha prashad to them which will transform their lives and hopefully this life or next life they will become the devotees. Because Mahaprasadam is the only hope for these conditional living entities. Now, do you see the difference in two things? Like this will, because there is emotions added into this. 
which will inspire people that yes, let's go out and distribute this prasad. Let's go out and distribute the holy name. Let's go out and distribute the books because that's the only hope for these conditioned living entities. So mission statement, I'm repeating this statement again and again, it needs to have some emotions added into that which can inspire us and which can inspire others. So we as an individual and an, as an institute, we need to come up with that mission and vision statement. Now all as a practicing devotees, what is the mission statement? Right? If we ask you, Prabhu, you are a, trying to be a devotee, you are practicing Krishna consciousness. So what do you really do? We pray to Krishna, we chant the holy name. To spread the Krishna consciousness. Right? So generally somebody will say, yeah, we have devote, we have deities in the temple, we serve the deities, we trust the deities, we garland the deities, we offer them prasad, we do a lot of aratis, we chant, we dance, so that's what we do. Yeah, very nice. So you do all this very nice, but will it immediately inspire that person? That person may not relate to all these things. Yes, ultimately we do these things to please Krishna, to serve Krishna. But what is our really mission statement and vision statement? So that it can inspire others. So Mataji said, to spread Krishna consciousness. Right, so we'll come towards that. So that today's session is to make you think, make you introspect as an individual and as an organization, how we need to act, how we need to work to transform our lives and transform others' lives. Because we are practicing this not just for time pass. How many of you are coming here just for time pass? Anybody coming here for time pass? I did not have anything else to do at home, so let me just go there. So I hope nobody is coming just for time pass, right? You are looking for something. Somebody is coming for two years, three years, six months. So you are coming here because you find some value in this. You want to get out of this something in your life. You want to improve your life. So towards the end, that is the goal. We want to come up with a mission statement and vision statement. What is the mission and vision of our coming together as a team of devotees? So when Prabhupada established this organization, 1966, when he officially registered ISKCON, I-S-K-C-O-N, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Prabhupada did not say International Society for God Consciousness. He specifically decided to write it, name it as International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Somebody said, people don't know who is Krishna. Let's say God Consciousness. People say, no, God is a very vague word. It's a weak word. Right? God is a general term. People don't know who is God. That's what we want to tell them, who is God. So Krishna is God and we want to teach people that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And when this organization was registered officially, Prabhupada in that document gave seven purpose of ISKCON. Anybody know the seven purpose of ISKCON? Somebody who has been coming for quite some time. How many of you really know the seven purpose of ISKCON? Not only ten years? More than 10 years, seven purpose of his con, one purpose, two purpose. Right, so we read, I'm sure we have read, we have discussed it earlier, but maybe we don't remember those. Because till now, maybe there has not sunk us, sunk in inside us. So today, I want to make sure these seven purpose of his con sink in everybody. Right, they go inside you and you always remember that. So I'm going to give you in a very easy way, very simple way, so you will remember it every day. So the seventh purpose of this song, first purpose, you can read here. Somebody would like to read? 
to systematically propagate spiritual knowledge to society at large and to educate all people in the techniques of spiritual life in order to check the imbalances of values in life and to achieve real unity and peace in the world. Okay, so very long statement. So you need to understand what does this purpose of organization mean? To systematically propagate spiritual knowledge to society at last and to educate all people in techniques of spiritual life. So if we really see the bottom line in this statement is to educate people in spiritual life. Right? To educate people in spiritual life, to teach them the spiritual priorities of life. To remove the imbalance in life. Right now there is so much imbalance. Everybody is running behind materialism. I want to earn more money, I want to have fun, I want to enjoy. So, no time for God or maybe 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, people go fold hand, come back, right? People go to temple, church, mosque. That's what people do generally. They go for a few minutes, pray. And as Jubilee Shakur was mentioning last time, even though somebody may say, I was in temple for two hours, but what really did you do in temple? You went in front of the Lord for two minutes and rest one hour, 58 minutes, you were sitting in the restaurant or with some devotees eating and gossiping. So, people have so much imbalance in their life, in their material life and spiritual life. So, to remove that imbalance. And how we remove that imbalance? By giving them spiritual priorities. So, we need to prioritize in our life. Right now, our priorities, what are our priorities in life? To go to work, to earn income, to send our kids to the best schools to send the kids to a lot of different activities, to make them aplakun, right? What, what is that statement? Jack of all and what something? Jack of all, master of none. Jack of all, master of none. Right? That's what we are trying to do with kids, send them this activity and that activity, five, seven different activities in the week. So, right now those are our priorities. But, learning the spiritual way of life and transforming our priorities, switching our priorities. So the first purpose in a very simplified language is to educate people, to preach to people about spiritual priorities of life. Okay, that is purpose number one. Will you remember it now? Simplified statement. To educate people about spiritual priorities of life. Second purpose. So, to, sure. to propagate a consciousness of Krishna as he is revealed in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. To propagate consciousness of Krishna as per the scriptures, primarily Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So even though this may seems like this also resonates with the first one to educate people about Krishna, to educate people about Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. But to educate people, what is needed? No, to educate based on scripture, what is needed? Association. Right? Right now, what are we doing? Association. So we come together every week and we learn from Bhagavad Gita, we learn from Bhagavatam. That is number two, right? To learn about Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. But that's not possible until we come in association of devotees. So the second purpose is more inclined toward to provide association, the opportunities for association, so that they can come and learn these scriptures. So the second purpose in a simplified language is to provide association. To fulfill the first purpose. Right? Third purpose of Islam. To bring the members of the society together with each other and nearer to Krishna. And thus to develop the idea within the members and humanity at large that each soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of God. Yes. So now third purpose 
What is the third purpose really means to bring the members of society together nearer to Krishna. So it's to establish Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. To teach people about Krishna, that everybody is part and parcel of Krishna. We are not individual, we are not the masters of this world. Krishna, he is the supreme lord, he is the owner, controller, proprietor, everything of this world. And we are his part and parcel. So this third purpose is really to teach about the Supreme Lord. That Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that's what the earlier in the beginning I said is Khan. Prabhupada was very insistent on saying the name is Khan. International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Not God Consciousness. Because we want to teach people who is God. Right? We generally say Bhagavan, Ishwar. So those are general terms. Let's say it's like a post. But somebody is there on that post. So if I call somebody, hey man, come here. Man is a general word, it can refer to everybody. But I say, Naresh Prabhu, please come here. Now I'm calling a specific person there. So same way, God is a general term, but who is God? So Krishna. That is the third purpose to establish, to teach people Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Clear? Fourth. Yes. So it's very straightforward. Fourth purpose of this conversation is said for this is to preach, to propagate the Yuga Dharma. What is the Yuga Dharma? The chanting of the holy name, the Sankirtan, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So to propagate Sankirtan movement, the congregation chanting of holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So that is the fourth purpose, specifically to establish the chanting of the holy name. Number five. To make it for the members and the society at last a holy place of transcendental pastimes dedicated to the personality of God. Hmm. This is also clear. Anybody can tell what does this really mean? To create, to build temples. Right, to build the holy places. So to erect the erect for the members and society at large holy places of transcendental pastimes dedicated to Krishna. So to build temples, build dham, let's say we have so many temples all around the world now, which are none other than spiritual world actually. It gives us the window to the spiritual world. And there are so many holy places developed, like in Mayapur. Holy Holy Dham has been built in Vrindavan. We have like a nice temple and nice Dham, nice facility for people to go there and enjoy the the Holy Land. And then all around the world, there are so many Holy Dham built. New Vrindavan, New Jagannath Puri. Right? Where is New Jagannath Puri? LA. New Vrindavan, West Virginia. There's New Pani Hati Dham, Atlanta. So like that, Prabhupada gave the name based on the holy places in the Western world to bring people kind of closer to the holy Dham. So people can at least come to these places. Every temple is like a Dham. We go to a Detroit temple or Farmington temple. That is like a Dham. Because what is Dham? Where there is always glorification of the Supreme Lord. Where there is a holy name, chanting of holy name, speaking about the Krishna Katha, serving the Lord. So that is like a Dham. Even though we may not be able to go to Vrindavan, we go to the temple and feel like being in a holy place. So this purpose is also very clear to build Dham, to build holy places, to build temples where people can come together. 
नंबर सिक्स राजेंद्र टू टू ब्रिंग द मेंबर्स क्लोजर टुगेदर फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ टीचिंग अ सिंपल एंड मोर नेचुरल वे ऑफ लाइफ सो दिस पॉइंट इज वेरी डियर टू मी आउट ऑफ द सेवन पर्पस दिस इज वन व्हिच रेजोनेट्स विद मी वेरी मच because this seven purpose maybe not all the seven purpose will resonate with you but there will be one or two particular point which you will be inspired with or you will want to kind of dedicate your life to those those things right so the sixth point what is the sixth point really mean to bring the members close together for the purpose of teaching a simple and more natural way of life this is to build community to build the communities of the devotees to bring devotees together so we'll talk about this point more so this point is specifically building community when we say building community it doesn't mean building some sort of like a farm community right we establish we buy a 100 acre land develop a farm or something it's actually people may be living different different places community means to bringing people together to keep people united for one common goal that is the purpose of building communities like we have the toy temple or farmington temple and that's a farmington temple there are so many devotees who live around within the 6 mile circle there right most of the congregation lives within 6 mile circle there so that is like building a community so people find okay this is a temple here and i want to live close to the temple so that i can come frequently to the temple i can come to attend mangala arati i can come in the evening take darshan of the lord i can come frequently to attend classes or to do some service so to have people closer together close to each other in physical proximity also and more than physical proximity it's by heart by heart people are close to each other so that is building a community so six purpose is to build communities at the time and proper build organization right the new temples and the new temples were building at that time everyone was fired up actually you know when, how the movement spread these people who were coming in the movement earlier they were given so much attention and care and they were given lot of there was some spark some fire was there to do something for the organization so they will come they will hear two three classes and they will move to the temple we want to dedicate our life we want to become part of the temple we want to come live in the temple and at the time there were if somebody comes to the temple he heard two three classes after that also he has not shaven his head he has not moved to the temple somebody would even start feeling something is wrong with you you have heard three classes still you have not shaven your head still you have not moved into the temple <laughs> so something is wrong with you you are not very serious i don't want to waste my time on you then so that was the mood that time people were dedicating their life they were coming and people who even though some of them were grihasthas some of them were living with the family many people accepted brahmacharya but right? people who will come to visit the temple basically they want to live as a brahmachari they want to just sir and some were grihasthas also you know what was the ratio that time between brahmacharis and grihastha in the beginning of the movement when the organization was getting established and spread in the beginning 95% of the devotees were brahmacharis only 5% were grihasthas and now it's opposite maybe 5% maybe brahmacharis even less maybe and 95% of our organization is now grihasthas at that time even the grihasthas they were living together like propas vision was you establish a center establish a temple and then start try to buy the buildings nearby to set up them as a apartments Okay, buy some houses where devotees can live together. So they will buy eight, ten 
apartments or houses nearby so all the devotees can live there and even the ghastas if they are working outside many of them actually did not work outside they were working for the organization and there was one company one business also started by devotees at that time it's called spiritual sky anybody heard that spiritual sky that that company was to manufacture incense thing we offer incense other bhakti do so that business was to manufacture incense that time the whole western world there was no incense manufacturing company so this business became really hit and many devotees were working in that company and at that time they were all the if somebody is fully serving the temple their all expenses are covered by temple basically they are taking prasadam in the temple right the apartment is temple's property so they are living there they don't have to pay any rent or anything and they were getting only 20 dollar a week as income just imagine 20 dollar a week how many of you can live on 20 dollar a week so that was their income but that was for their some personal expense that they have to because their food is from temple and their accommodation is from temple and inside the apartment they have nothing there is no sofa set dining table there is no bed no television which they have to pay some bills or something they had a very simple way of life their work started morning 9 o'clock after bhagavatam class after taking breakfast so at end the whole morning program in the temple arati chanting bhagavatam class take prasadam and then they go to work and their work ends by evening so they come home take shower attend shayana and uh, attend the evening sandhya arati take prasad so very simple way of life keeping krishna in the center the originally that was the vedic system of life also right the lifestyle was very simple people in the morning they get up early they do their spiritual sadhana they go do their work in the evening they come back take shower take prasad and then people get together and they hear krishna katha they hear ram katha they do some kirtan and then go to bed take rest so very simple way of life now what has happened we have made our lives very complicated even though there are so many gadgets there are so much of the all these machinery is there washing machines and dryers everything automatic still our lives are much busier are right? everybody agree with that even though we have all these luxuries of life facilities of life, we are more busier than ever why because we are knowingly or unknowingly wasting a lot of time on all these gadgets somebody is using the phone so much time goes on phone just checking messages here and there go to internet surf something then sitting on computer and surfing facebook once you start facebook then one hour two hour goes like anything we keep checking oh let me check one more message then one more message then one more message who posted what message how many likes they got how many likes i got so so much time goes in these things and then traveling far away people will travel to work spend one hour going one hour coming back so even though we have all these gadgets still life is complicated so the purpose is to build communities to live together to learn a simpler way of life to care for each other in the community when we have a spiritual community it's not about talking about krishna yes we care for each other also that's called devotee care right building community means to care for each other so that is the sixth purpose to build communities number 7 So to fulfill all other purpose, the seventh purpose is to write. So to publish and distribute books, articles, periodicals, books, because books are the basis. 
that as Prabhupada said, books are the basis. Purity is the force. Then what else? Purity is the force, books are the basis. Okay. So, seven purpose, everybody understood? You want to know even in one single short sentences the seven purpose? So you can remember those. Okay, so seven purpose of ISKCON, more simplified wording. Number one, to educate people about spiritual priorities of life. So we discuss that. Number two, to provide association for cultivating spiritual awareness. Number three, to establish Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Number four, to spread congregational chanting of the holy name. Number five, to develop dham, the holy places, temples. Number six, to develop communities for the purpose of simple living. Number seven, to publish and distribute books. So how many of you will remember that now? You will remember? So, still difficulty in remembering? I will give you one more short question. <laughs> okay. So, say with me. Number one, educate. Number two, association. Number three, Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Number four, chanting of the Holy Name. Number five, Dham. Just remember Dham. Okay, number six, communities. To develop communities. Number seven, books. To publish and distribute books. Yes, now will you remember? One, 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 one words. In one words you can remember? So number one, education. Number two, association. Number three, Krishna. Number four, Chanting. Number five, Dham. Number six, communities. Number seven, books. Okay? Everybody say it one time. Seven words. Education, association, Krishna, chanting, Dham, community, books. Now we'll remember? Everybody will remember the seven purpose now? Okay? Remember. So that's why I gave that seven purpose in one single words. If you want even easier version, <laughs> remember E A K C D C B. Say it. E A K C D C B. E A K C D C B. Tell your person next to you. Everybody, tell the person sitting next to you. So once tell to the left person, once tell to the right person. <laughs> okay, e A K C D C B. E education. A association. K Krishna. C chanting. D dham. C community. B books. E A K C D C B. Yes. E A K C D C B. Instead of E A K E A K C D C B. Yeah. So you can cut this into any form you want. So E A K E A K C D C B. E A K C D C B. Okay. So. Now, what are these seven purposes of ISKCON? We were talking about mission, vision and values. Is that our mission? The seven purposes which we discussed now. Is that the mission statement of ISKCON? Is that the mission statement as a team of devotees? This is more as a vision. Right? How we do. Our goal is to understand Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead to go back to Krishna, to develop our 
personal relationship with Krishna. That is the ultimate goal. And these seven purposes are which help us towards that for fulfilling our individual goal and to help others. Now, again, coming back to that question, if I ask everybody of you, what is your goal? What is your mission statement as a devotee of Krishna? What will you say? See, again, mission statement is something which has emotions inside it. Right? So what is our mission statement? It's not that, okay, we serve the deities, we decorate the deities, we garland the deities. Yes, we do that as our service to Krishna, to please Krishna. But what is our mission statement? What are we trying to do individually and collectively? To go back to Godhead and inspire others to go back. To go back to Godhead? Inspire and inspire others to go back to Godhead. So that could be one of our mission statement, right? That could be listed as our mission statement. That we want to go back to Godhead and help others also to go back to Godhead. Anybody else? To lead a simple, meaningful life. To live a simple, meaningful life. Without God in the center, no matter how simple, how good the person is, it's still useless actually. Right? So, have a simple life centered towards Krishna. Then, yes, it makes sense. Anybody else? Dasan Das. Okay, we want to serve others. Right? Our mission is to serve others in helping them to go back to Krishna. And what we do in the process actually? Our goal is to what? Remove from heart. What we want to remove? We want to remove our impurities. So, saying something like, we want to transform our lives and transform the life of others. Detachment from the material and attachment to spiritual. Okay? So, Prabhupada, Prabhupada actually gave the mission statement also in his writing, in his books and letters. Prabhupada mentioned, I want to create a revolution in consciousness of every living entity. So what is the mission? I want to create a revolution. For each and individual, each and every living entity to connect them with Krishna. So what, what, what to do? What, what is the mission? To create a revolution? Right? If you tell somebody, what is the mission statement of your organization? We create revolution. Wow. So what you do as a revolution? What kind of revolution you create? To connect them with Krishna. So basically, we transform the life of people. Right? So that is kind of our mission statement. To transform our lives and transform the life of others. So how, how many of you feel inspired to transform your life? Right? And how about transforming the life of others? More inspired? Right? So that's why when you read the mission statement of your occupation, it may not resonate much with you. When I go to my work, my purpose is to earn income, to maintain my family. But when we come together for a bigger purpose as a spiritual organization, now the mission statement of organization is to transform our life and transform life of others. That resonates much more with many people. To make our lives better and help others make their lives better. Right? We talked about the ambitions and career, right? Ambitions and spiritual life. That time also we discussed. Sometimes our ambition in material life may be very worth, but when we come in the spiritual life, 
we can find a better ambition we can find a better purpose of life so out of these seven vision the seven purposes how we serve each other or how we help each other go towards that so the values which we want to build is so first of all let's talk about communities here we mentioned one of the purpose was to build communities where devotees can come together for a simple way of life and i said this is not just farm community it is developing relationship with each other having treating everybody as a part of family right that is the purpose of building a community so everybody feel part of a family it's not that okay once in a week we come here we just do something and we go back but we start feeling each other having personal relationship with each other and feeling them as part of our real family proper build this organization this is con organization is con movement and this is a the whole world can live in this this is like a big family where the whole world can live in this there is no what do you call hmm? vasudeva kutumbakam yes so this whole world is like a big family there is no racism based on caste color even religion no matter what part of the world somebody is everybody can feel part of this family if somebody comes from a far away city to your city here they come to this temple and they are immediately welcome oh from you came from that far away city you came from that temple you are connected with that temple so they will welcome you they will take care of you provide you nice prasadam and even you from here go to some other place some other is on temple in other part of the world you tell them to oh, i am connected with that temple in america and they will receive you so nicely oh you came from there and take care of you provide good nice prasadam for you everything so that is like building a nice family and in a community the most important thing is developing relationships unless we have good relationship with each other there is no point of community there may be living 10 families in the neighborhood we may say there are 10 devotee families living here but if we don't have good relationship with each other then what is the point then it's like other 100 families living here so developing relationships and relationships can be developed when there is care for devotees and how do we care for devotees any idea how how do we care for devotees so devotee care is not by just creating a group or a, a ministry devotee care ministry so some devotees are approach to upar they say to upar we want to create a devotee care ministry so what is the purpose so there will be a group of devotees who will oversee the function of that over that yes our goal is to care for devotees but you don't care for devotees by creating a ministry you care for devotees by caring for devotees and right? unless we so show a genuine care for others what is the point of caring for devotees caring for devotee means not just oh are you chanting or not are you reading or not caring for them means in the time of need if there is any physical problem also if there is a health issue also to show genuine care for them okay you are sick you are not able to cook let me give you some pressure can i do something for you so devotee care means taking care of them in the time of need somebody is going through financial challenge somebody lost their job to care for them somebody is traveling outside to take care of their needs so some devotees are really into these kind of devotee relationships devotee care that shows our genuine interest in each other actually it's not that how many people are coming here and listening to me it's about how much we really care for them right are we really concerned about their well being their spiritual progress or are we just caring for 
our own interest. How many of us came to this get together or to came to his con, came for this organization for name and fame? Right? How many we started coming to the program or if I come to the program I will become famous? How many people joined his con for becoming wealthy? How many people joined this con for getting a position? All of us started coming to the spiritual get-togethers for what purpose? Just to make our lives better. Right? That is the main purpose. To make our lives better. To improve our lives. To progress spiritually. But sometimes it does happen that when people are in the process for some time, they start developing some wrong desires also. <clears throat> then they start developing this desire, oh, I want to get a position. Oh, I want to get some name and fame. Oh, I want to do my business in the guise of coming to this organization. And many people, sometimes people get into this kind of agenda also, which is not aligning with the real values of our movement, our organization. So, Communities means having loving relationship with each other, caring for each other, respecting each other. So the values which we carry, if we want to develop these communities, a formula to use. Anybody has heard PPP formula? In the business world also, they have something called a PPP formula. People, profit, and something else. Yeah, public-private partnership. So PPP formula. So I am also giving you a PPP formula, which is to have our relationship with each other. What should be our priorities? To understand our relationship with each other, to develop these communities. So what is this PPP? Prabhupada, first comes Prabhupada, right? Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya. We are getting the teachings from Prabhupada. He is having a very special position in each and every devotee's life. So we need to have that deep love and respect for Prabhupada. So P for Prabhupada. Then second P is Prabhus. Not just Prabhus, Prabhus and Mata is putting everybody in the same category. Because it's not the matter of gender. So ultimately everybody is Prabhus. <laughs> so second P is Prabhus. Prabhus means all the people, right? People in our life, all the devotees. So all the Prabhus. So first consideration for Prabhupada, having our relationship with Prabhupada. Second is Prabhus. Then third is projects. Because we have many projects in ISKCON, like running the temple and running organizing the festivals. So it could be a big project, small project, whatever it is. So Prabhupada, Prabhus and project. If the sequence changes, then it messes up all the relationship. So if you put projects in front of people, what will happen? So you are giving priority to your project. You don't care for people. Right? You, don't, you don't care for Prabhus. You are just using the people. As long as they are working, they are helping you, they matter to you. If they are not helping you, then you don't worry about them. You don't bother about them anything. Then it's a very selfish idea. Oh, I care for my project. I am having this festival. I am organizing this festival. If he is going to help me, then he, then he is dear to me. Otherwise, I don't bother about him. So that's why caring for people, people come first, Prabhus come first, then projects. Sometimes somebody may be very productive, sometimes that person may not be productive. Right? Some, but at some point of time you are able to do a lot of service, but at other point of time you are not able to do service because of some issues, maybe health issues or some other family issues. But at that time if that person is ignored, oh he is not useful to us anymore now, I don't care for him. Then that gives hard time in relationships. That gives hard burns. That person feels, 
the last four years I've been helping so much. Now one time I'm not able to do and they just forgot me. So our purpose is to keep people in front, to take care of people. Projects will be there, projects will keep changing. And having mutual respect for each other also, we will discuss that as we move forward. So Prabhupada, Prabhus and projects. We want to keep devotees ahead of projects. So why did we come to ISKCON? We discuss that. We are not after position, we are not after name and fame, we are not after for acquiring some wealth. Now I got a temple, um, what do you call, finance officer position. All the money which is coming to temple is going through my hand and I can utilize it whatever way I want. People, If people start developing that kind of distorted idea, then it's a complete upside down vision of our organization or we are going away from the values. So now, what are the values we need to carry when we resonate with the mission of the organization and the vision of the organization? So what are the values? Generally as the organization, right, we discuss the values. Zero crashes, zero congestion, zero omissions, so like those are the values. So same way as part of spiritual organization, what are the values we are trying to develop? So number one, compassion. Right? That is our mission statement also. To show compassion towards all the living entities. Seeing that everybody is suffering in this material world. And we should help them to come out of the suffering situation. So that is also like a mission statement. It has a emotions in that to show compassion towards others. Not to have selfish agenda and have humility and service attitude. Like Matan said earlier, Das, Das, and Das. Right? So that is the value. That is the value you want to carry as a service attitude. So it's not about me, 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 me. Me first. Putting other first. Serving others. It's not that, oh, I'm the leader, so everybody come, should come and serve me. I should sit and everybody should come to us. Should I serve you this? Should I serve you that? So it's not about that. It's not about keeping us in the center, but trying to serve others. Not becoming boss, boss, and boss, but becoming das, das, and das. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives this philosophy das, 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 and das. I am the servant of the servant of servants. But many times, what we can get, nobody wants to become the servant, everybody wants to become the boss. Externally we may say, oh, I am your servant, Prabhu, your humble servant. But inside, what is the motive? I want servants. Others should serve me. I want to be the boss, 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 I am the boss. So really, keeping that in the mind, we are here to serve others. We are not here to take service from others. So that is the first value. Developing compassion, humility, service, attitude. Then honest communication. That is another very important value which we need to have. It will help you in your professional life also. Having honest communication. What does it really mean? Speaking, what's in your mind. Speaking what is really in your heart. Right? Expressing your viewpoint honestly. It's not always like doing a sugar coating thing. Even you did not like, but tell, oh yeah, yeah, everything is all right. I liked it very much. If you really feel some problem, openly and honestly expressing your viewpoint. It's not about to criticize other person, to find fault in that person, but to express your viewpoint with a view of concern, that I am concerned about this. Right? We don't want to go to fault finding in others. We don't want to judge others, criticize others. But giving honest feedback, honest opinion. In our profession, in our companies also, there is a concept of receiving feedback and giving feedback. How many of you do that, right? Receiving feedback and giving feedback. And everybody should be reciprocative or everybody should be responsive to that. Somebody is giving you feedback to accept that feedback. With a viewpoint of improving. So same way, see our culture back in India, what is the culture? You don't want to 
be harsh to your elders, right? Be very polite, respectful. So if your mother cooked the food and it is not tasting nice, it is not of your choice, mother asks, Beta, how did you like it? What will you say? Yeah, yeah, it's nice, it's very nice. So you did not like it. It's horrible. But what did you say? No, it's very nice, it's very nice. Yeah, it's okay. In America, in Western countries, what is the culture? So if somebody cooked the food and the person will say, they ask, how is it? Yeah, it's okay. But I really don't like this. Oh, I really don't like carrots. Or I don't really like this. So you will tell that person up front. And that is an extreme also actually. Completely not even caring for how much energy, how much time, how much effort other person is They're telling, oh I don't like this. So oh, this is not nice. And the other culture is not giving the honest feedback and just being a sugar coating. So we need to find a middle way, giving an honest opinion. Yes, I appreciate your effort. I appreciate you spent so much time and energy cooked for me. But salt is little less. Or I like this particular vegetable or this particular item more. So that's like a, in a very positive way, subtly telling your input also. So the other person also doesn't feel bad and you give your input also. Everybody understand? Right? Honest communication. If we don't give honest communication to the person directly one on one, what will happen? Otherwise, what will happen? So let's say you did not like something I did or I said. So you did not express it to me privately. But later on, you go and much, 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 but with somebody else. Oh, why did Prabhu said like this? Oh, why did he do like this? So you will go tell somebody else. And that somebody else will tell somebody else. And that somebody else will tell somebody else. And then from there, after going in circle, that comes to me. So how is that? How does that feel? If it happens to you like that? So it's like there is a saying, if you want to spread a news in the whole community, in the whole complex, the, see, olden time there was no WhatsApp groups, right? WhatsApps and all. And just tell your wife. And within half an hour, the news will spread throughout the complex. <laughs> and on top, you tell, please don't tell anybody. <laughs> then they tell even more. And then that person also tells. I'm telling you, but please don't tell anybody. And that person also told one person, I'm telling you, but please don't tell anybody. So one by one by one, ek ek karte karte, so long of others. <laughs> so rather than telling others what I did not like or better is to have open communication out of concern. Okay? That is called honest communication. Not having the tendency of fault finding and criticism, of course, we don't want to start seeing negative, start seeing bad in everything. See, Lord Krishna, he gives a very simple, very nice statement. He tells Uddhava, in the 11th canto of Bhagavatam, Uddhava Gita, he tells Uddhava how to live in this world. Krishna says, live in this world without seeing good and bad. Without seeing good and bad in anything. And Uddhava says, my Lord, what you are saying, you are speaking like standing on a mountain and I am standing at the feet of the mountain. I cannot see what you can see. You are saying don't see good and bad in others but I am experienced in seeing that. So how can I live without seeing good and bad? So Lord said, if you cannot live without seeing good and bad, then do one thing. See good in others and see bad in yourself. So see good in others and try to find faults within yourself. Bura jo dekhan na chala, bura na milya koi, apne andar jha kya to mujhse bura na koi. So that is the philosophy we should also 
acquire, I want to see faults in myself, not see fault in others. It's very easy to judge others. Especially when we come in the process, now we find so many do's and don'ts. Right? We have so many rules and regulations. You should do this, you should not do this. And when we have all these do's and don'ts, we come and we start judging others. Oh, why he is not doing that? Or why he is doing that? So those do's and don'ts is first for yourself. You implement those. Don't start looking in others and start judging others. Today is Nirjala Ekadashi. So better you observe for yourself. It's not that you start judging others, 100 people. Oh, he is fallen. He is good for nothing. He is not observing Nirjala. I am so great. See, I am doing this. So it's not to judge others. Those things are for ourselves. Sometimes this becomes, we are doing Ekadashi fasting. But Ekadashi fasting becomes like feasting. What type of feasting? Finding faults in others. Feasting on finding faults in others. We don't want that type of fasting. So, appreciation. Next quality which we want to build is appreciation for others. What does appreciation mean? It is opposite of fault finding. Right? Rather than finding fault in others, appreciating others for whatever qualities they have. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Everybody knows, right? Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Who is that? Who is he? Saraswati. So some devotee came to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati trying to give complaint about some other devotee. Right? They were complaining. They came to complain about other devotee. And what will he do? He will say, okay, you, are, you want to complain about that person? So I will pick two people. Please don't mind. I am just giving taking as an example. So, let's say Naresh Prabhu comes and he wants to complain about Rajendra Prabhu. <laughs> or he did this or he did that. So, before you complain about him, I will like you to appreciate him for something. Very difficult. I came here to complain about that. You are asking me to glorify that person. To appreciate that person for something. So it may be hard, but if you try, at least you will find something good in him for which you can appreciate him. So once the person has appreciated that person, now case dismiss. What is the point to complain about him? You already appreciated him, glorified him. Why do you want to complain about him now? So rather than complaining, if you, really, if you get a complaint for somebody, first try to appreciate him for something. And when you appreciate that person, your complaint will go away. Oh, I should not complain about him. I should not focus on the negative. Maybe out of some conditioning, out of something, he did that, but he will correct. So that is appreciation. Having appreciation for others and cooperation. <clears throat> one of the very important quality, one of the very important value which we need to have. Mutual cooperation. What does cooperation mean? Help each other. Help each other. So individually, to progress individually, we need to cooperate. And as an organization, we need to cooperate. Prabhupada, when he gave this mission and vision, his statement was, his request to all the devotees was, Prabhupada, how can we please you? They asked Prabhupada, how can we please you? What is the answer, you know? Prabhupada said, when you cooperate with each other, that will be most pleasing to me. So mutual cooperation. Sometimes everybody wants to go with their own agenda. And as we mature a little bit in Krishna consciousness, we have some, maybe become a little senior and we have some projects given to us. And then we think I am the leader and I need to handle this project. This is my project. That is his project. So people want to go with their own project. They want to use everybody for their project, but they don't want to help others for their project. So that is not cooperation. It's not that my project or your project. It's project for Krishna. So cooperating with each other. 
if we are not cooperating with each other, thinking, oh, it's his project, I don't want him to be successful in his project. If he becomes successful, his glory will spread, he will become as a competition for me. Then what kind of mentality is that? That is politics. Right? A typical example in politics is, I will give you an example, West Bengal, Mayapur comes in West Bengal. Right? So, from Calcutta to go to Mayapur, the whole freeway, which is takes three to four hours in normal time, and if it's traffic, it can take six, seven, eight hours also if there is traffic jam. And the roads are very bad. Anybody going to Mayapur? Is a, the road is very bad, and the government want to fix that road. They want to build that road. So this proposal came to build a nice highway from Calcutta to Mayapur, and that project was under federal government. Central government. So, what did the state government do? They denied to participate. They denied to cooperate with that project because this is under federal government, central government, and central government is a different is a different party, different ruling party in central government. State government is a different party. They said if if this project is successful, that party will get all the credit. And they, they will become even more stronger. So they, we don't want to get the glory of building this project or making this road. So this project never went on. So what is that? That is the example of envy with each other or not cooperating with each other for a common good. So if that project is successful, who will benefit? All the common people. So we are not looking at the actual goal, why we are here to serve others for the common goal, but we are taking our own agenda. I don't want him to be successful. I don't want his project to become successful. I want my project to be successful. So in spiritual organization also, if it becomes like that kind of mentality, then where is cooperation? Oh, organizing this festival is my project. Organizing that festival is his project. He is the leader. I don't want to cooperate with him. I want everybody to cooperate with me. So we don't want that kind of attitude. So cooperation is very important. Prabhupada said, you will please me by your mutual cooperation. We should remember why we came. Our goal is to give compassion, show compassion to others, to serve others. And if people fight with each other, then where is the, how we are serving the real goal, the real mission. And the next is purity. At an individual level purity, at an organization level purity. Right? So we need to be pure in our habits. That's only when we can affect others' consciousness. If we are not pure in our habits, how we can affect others' consciousness? If we keep telling others, Oh, you should do this, you should get up early in the morning, you should chant the holy name in the morning. And if we are just saying, saying, saying ourselves, we are not doing, then how will it will impact others? So first thing is, Purity in ourselves. But another statement is collective unity is better than individual purity. You understand that statement? Collective unity is better than individual purity. If somebody says, I want to just follow everything purely myself, but I don't want to cooperate with others, right? they are all useless, they don't follow all the same standards. That is also not useful, because then you will not be able to fulfill the real purpose, which is to distribute the compassion, distribute the holy name. So, collective unity is better than individual purity. At our level, yes, we need to be pure in our dealing, pure in our habits, but we need to work in unity with others. So, commitment. So I will end in maybe another five minutes. Sorry if it's getting late. So commitment. What is commitment? So showing our commitment to the process. Showing our commitment to the institute. Showing our commitment to the person. So Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, what does Krishna say? Sarva Dharma Parityajya Maam Ekam Sharanam Raja. Only me. Right? Krishna says surrender only unto me. 
So Krishna is asking for commitment. Well, if you don't go here, don't go there, commit to me. So same way commitment is very important. <clears throat> commitment to the Lord, commitment to the institute. So I will give you another example. When you did your engineering degree or your medical degree, you went to one particular college, one particular university, right? Or were you going to one week to a college, next week to a different college, third week to third different college, fourth week to different college, so trying different, 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 different things. You committed to one college, oh, I am registered with this college, I am committing to this college for four years of my degree, I want to get proper education. And that institute may be far away from your house also. I say which was a four hour from my home, four hour travel that time. Somebody who maybe have stayed, stayed even longer, farther away. Isn't it? There may be some other college which was closer to your home. There was a college which was in my hometown, but chose to go to a different place for education. Why? Because I see the value in that. Right? It's better than this college. I want to study from that college. So same way, when we come to as a spiritual organization, we are seeing a value here. So we want to show our commitment to Prabhupada. We want to show commitment to his teaching. We want to show commitment to the institute. Why I am bringing this point is many times this thought comes in the mind, oh, his own temple is half an hour drive. There is another Hindu temple here, 10 minute drive. What is the difference? Ultimately, God is everywhere. Bhagavan ka dhar hai, so I can go here. Why I have to drive 30 minutes? But why we came to Iskon? We saw something here, right? Why we are coming to this weekly program? We saw something here, right? We are getting some value here. Everybody agreed with that. Why we are coming? Because we see some value to improve in our lives. So, same way, Yes, there may be other places, other temples are here around, but we are seeing much more value. This is like the institute where we are resisting for improving our lives. So in that way, having our dedication, our commitment for the institute, our commitment for Shri Prabhupada. And then another point also about commitment is, I think... Um, I already mentioned that point. Commitment means why somebody will stay in organization. There has to be something. Otherwise people will come and go. Why you will stay in one particular institute, one particular organization, even in your work also. Why will you stay there? As long as it's fulfilling your needs. As long as you are being valued there. Right? If your needs are not getting fulfilled, if you are not getting value there, you will leave that place. You will try to find something else. So why people will stick to one organization when they see the value? When they see, yes, the people here are really nice. They value each other. They have mutual respect for each other. They care for each other. And I feel like home here. Right? If you feel like home, then you will feel like coming again and again. Otherwise, you feel like, oh, I'm not welcome here. I feel it out of place. Then you don't want to come to that place anymore. So that's why we want to build communities. We want to have everybody feel at home, feel part of it, not that being repelled. So anybody will stay in the organization if they feel valued, if they see people have respect for each other. They can gain something. There are good relationships among each other. They feel valued. They see everybody have love and respect for each other. And when they see other people are blissful. It's not that they are very burdensome or miserable. If people around us are miserable, then nobody wants to be there. <laughs> Isn't it? So, when people see, yes, these people are very blissful. I want to be part of this. So how we become blissful? And if, if we follow these things. 
then we can say, say blissful. Uh, there are many controversies sometimes when people want to put others down. They want to minimize them, they want to minimize the organization. So like that, for every organization, there may be that kind of viewpoint outside. Oh, these people do like this, they, they do like this. They want to spread controversies to put them down. Example I will give you for the... In many years ago, there was a controversy that milk is bad for you. Anybody has heard that controversy? Right? And still there also, some people still say that the milk is bad for you. It's not good for you. Actually, milk is the complete food. Many of us know that, right? Milk is the complete food in itself. But people will have a controversial statement. They will spread some controversial theories. Oh, it's bad. It's not good for you. Like that in about Islam, about Hare Krishna also, there will be many controversial statements. Oh, Hare Krishna people. Oh, they are very dangerous. Don't go close to them. If you go there, they will change you. Or they will make you change your religion or something. So sometimes crazy statements are there. If you go there, they will make you do these, these, these things. Oh, you should try out everything. Why you want to give up everything and take to one particular thing? Even though they do all that, right? They try one thing. They stick with one job. They send their children to one school. But when it comes to spiritualism, they say, oh, why this particular only? You try this also, that also. So there may be many controversial statements. So milk, I said there was a controversy. Milk is not good for you. It's bad for you. And at that time, milk industry, they started doing some campaign. And what was the campaign? They will have some celebrity, some famous person with a milk glass in hand, with milk moustaches and a statement underneath. Got milk? Right? Like this a basketball player or some other um, celebrity. Right? Having just some milk moustaches and got milk? So, and after that this whole milk industry again boomed. Then they see somebody promoting it and some very a celebrity or a famous person when they sell, uh, promote it. So same way in our organization, there is all the things which are needed, everything is there to be successful in life, to be successful in your material life, your family life, your occupation, career and your spiritual life. This is our main focus, main goal, to progress in spiritual life. But it is a wholesome package. How many of you feel you are becoming better as a person also? Right? When you attend these classes, when you take these teachings from the scriptures, we are becoming, as a person also, we are becoming better. It's not about that one chanting and progressing in spiritual life. But it's a wholesome package. So everything is there. And how we can show the compassion towards others when they see us blissful, when they see us happy. If they see us miserable, nobody come to you. If your children think, oh, my dad is chanting 16 round and he is very miserable, he is chanting, his mouth, his face expressions are as if somebody put some neem leaves in his, inside his mouth, some bitter thing in his mouth, then will they take up chanting? You are miserable, why should I chant? So if we really want to inspire others, we have to feel inspired, we have to feel blissful. And that is possible when we engage in the process in a proper way, in a systematic way. So how the others will be inspired when they see devotees who are blissful. So as the milk industry has slogan, got milk, to inspire others, our slogan should be got bliss. Did you get bliss? Not come here. You can be blissful. So chanting, <clears throat> chanting Hare Krishna increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. You will see devotees jumping up and down with ecstasy. Is that possible just externally? Is that possible mechanically? Devotees in the Mangal Arati, 5 o'clock, they are 
chanting and dancing and jumping up and down. If you go to a wedding party, if you tell your friend, let's dance, oh, no, I cannot dance. First, if you go inside, then you will go out. And if I drink and I get intoxicated, then my feet will move. So they need something first to get intoxicated so that they can dance. But here, are they getting some intoxication? What is the intoxication here? That is the intoxication of the holy name. Right? The transcendental bliss. And when we stay around those people, what will happen to us? It will rub on us. Right? We will also feel that bliss. So you come to temple at 12 o'clock, 12 to 1 kirtan, and so many devotees are there chanting and dancing. And you will also feel that bliss. You will start dancing. So, when people see us blissful, they will also be inspired. So our slogan is, God bliss. And the bliss of chanting the holy name. Bliss of service. Bliss of mutual loving relationships. So that is, these are the values we want to carry. So our mission statement, everybody clear? What is our mission statement? What is our mission statement as a team of devotees? What should be our mission? Everybody, to transform our lives and to help transform others' lives. Right? So we should imbibe this as our mission statement. To make ourselves better and help make others better. And vision, what are the visions? To educate, to associate, establishing Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, chanting the Holy Name, Dham, building communities, books, distributing books. Prabhupada books, because Prabhupada books are like the bombs. And then, values. What are the values we want to carry? Compassion, Compassion humility, Honest service attitude, appreciation for others, Honest, Honest communication, purity, purity, purity cooperation. cooperation. Right? So these are the values we want to carry. Commitment, right? So that's another important value. Commitment. Commitment to the purpose, commitment to the person, commitment to the institute. Many people sometimes, they run away just thinking, oh, other person is better. Oh, he is doing bigger project. If I go there, I will be valued more. Or I will be given some position. So they run away and they want to go to a different person, a different team of devotees because... As, as they say, right, the grass on the other side is always green. They think I will be valued more there. Or they are very smiling always and welcoming always. So I will be better there. But after a few months, then you will see, oh, it's all from external only. I was better in first place. <laughs> so not going with externals. Dikhave pe mat jao, apna dimag lagao, apni akal lagao. We need to carry these values. Very important. Everybody, maybe try to speak these values to yourself. I want to cultivate these values. Honest communication, appreciation for others, commitment, cooperation. Right? Compassion. So, let's be very clear about the mission as individual person and as a team of devotees, the vision and the values. Okay, so thank you very much. Sorry we went little over time, but uh, it is good to spend time in association of devotees, especially on Ekadashi. I know Farmington Temple, they had an offer. Every, anybody want to come whole night, stay there and chant. Because Ekadashi, the system is, they stay awake all night. Right? That is the full fasting on Ekadashi, actual fasting. You don't sleep all night, you stay awake. If anybody can do that. <laughs> so they are offered. If anybody would like to come and stay here in the temple all night, join in the chanting. So 
but we are not able to do that at least for a couple of hours in association of devotees coming together, chanting the holy name and learning to grow in spiritual life. So thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Chai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Kanda Ki Chai So anybody has any question, comment or we can save the question and comment for the next time. It's already late. Okay, so thank you very much. Hare Krishna.